Hello, my name is Patricia McNeely. I'm an illumined twin flame from Chicago, Illinois. I am a part of the Magdalene Jeshua soul group of Royal Angelic Blu-ray Illumined Twin Flames, which sounds like a mouthful. Except what I'm finding out is that uh, something that I, I kind of knew all along, but I'm starting to get this information coming in actual people that I'm meeting and talking to, is that uh, there's many twin flames. The waves that have been set into motion have been propelling people into the places and situations and encounters that uh, they've been expecting, praying, and wishing for. So those dreams are starting to pop a little bit. And I actually have been uh, having the pleasure of speaking to many different types of twins. Um, we're all from one source. And I want to make a point to you that uh, for some of you who are still waiting for your twin to arrive in your life, either to come back or for you to encounter your twin, a lot of you are the majority. And the majority of you uh, have this plan for a reason. A lot of you are getting things out of the way so that you don't have to do it together or what you have together is actually going to be uh, relatively minimal. So today I want to talk to you about uh, this little uh, part of uh, the energies that are going on. Of course, there's many levels of energies, and some of them are very deep at the molecular level, and they're still occurring. Uh, what started intensely in April for a lot of people has continued, and for other people it sort of let up a bit. Now, the other thing is that um, there are several, like every year, there's eclipses, there's retrograde. What does this mean for twins? And please know that I am not an astrologer. I am a twin flame. So when I talk about this stuff, it may seem like gloss over it, but I talk about how these energies, which are not just the energies, these are actually, as twin flames, our connections to the planetary influences. And there have been paradigms that we have explored in these uh, planets. Some of you remember this. Some of you don't remember it, and you don't have to. What is important is to remember that you are the love and to always focus on love because you are the light and the love on this planet. So whether or not you traveled through a planetary system and explored the paradigm that that planet presented to you and you remember it, and you have total recall, or you don't, if you have little small smatterings, it's irrelevant. The key here is focusing on what you know, what you know, what you know, what your heart knows. So today I'm going to talk specifically about going from uh, the full moon into the summer solstice energy, beginning with actually last uh, week and uh, kind of into the week before that. Now, I happen to be uh, in Florida for a week, and during that time I experienced the full effects of the Venus retrograde, which for me personally uh, felt like a rusty pipe taken out of my spleen. I didn't expect that. But um, I knew and felt that this was the last of some of the damage to my Divine Feminine, some of my chakras. It was healed. I was very blessed that I was uh, at a beach location and so I could ground myself very easily at the ocean. And uh, what's occurring this week is, uh, starting from the 6th, 7th, we've got a new Mercury retrograde. Now I want to talk a little bit about Mercury retrograde. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, things go backwards or, or they just look like they don't... If they're not moving in reverse, they're like completely at a dead stop sometimes. Well, that's what a retrograde is, and that is why it'll seem like situations come up like deja vu, and you're saying like, didn't I do this last year, or didn't I have this situation last year? Many times it's coming up for you to either see other nuances with it, the subtleties, maybe things you couldn't see before, so that you can collapse it and get it out of your life once and for all and pretty much forever. You don't want certain things in your union. 
you are continually moving towards 5D union and there are things that cannot be contained, low energies, old things. Um, this can be objects, organizations, people, uh, substances. It can be a lot of things. And what maybe was okay last year or something that you got through, maybe now that you're ready to encounter your twin, it just doesn't belong there. So what this is, is this is actually exposure of things. And it's the all-encompassing exposure of what must be decided. And having things exposed to you in and of itself actually is happening because the intention is for you to take action, to take real action. And this for some people means maybe um, something at the extreme. I mean, some people have had to go to the extent of... Uh, taking legal actions on things. This can be divorces, it can be custody agreements, it can be um, even, you know, orders where you maybe are restraining a person or it's a temporary thing or seeking some kind of help that maybe you didn't in the past. So this is, this is taking real action because this stuff is exposed. Mercury uh, actually... Uh, influences the intellect thought it's an airy thing you know, it's up here it's lofty ideas but in actuality what it winds up being for twins frequently is intellectualizing a process that is experiential so in other words for us twins we are experiencing this this is our new life this is us getting rid of actively getting rid of stuff so we can't intellectualize it, we can't rationalize it, we can't explain it away. We either take the actions that are appropriate or we keep floundering with it. And people are also seeing their twin really needing to make some uh, hard decisions here and they're flailing around with it. They are not taking the actions and that is... Um, for twins, that actually goes into the realm of being painful. Now, I've had some people ask me and they say, Patricia, you write about this stuff and you keep insisting twins be together. You know, maybe twins don't want to be together. Maybe there's an agreement there. And I say this, why would your soul ever agree not to reunite itself? It's more like a divine timing thing. And don't let anyone talk you out of it. If you feel in your heart that you're here to be with your one true love. You're not supposed to intellectualize it and analyze it and see how is it supposed to happen. You're ex supposed to expect it. And that is actually a large part of what one counterpart is doing. They're finishing, they're healing, and they're expecting their twin. And sometimes the other twin is refusing to take any physical actions. So you have an impasse, you have a crossroads, and this becomes very difficult for people to then navigate and hold steady. And some of you have had to pretty much draw your line in the sand and, and set the boundary and say, you know what, I'm not a yo-yo. You can't put me on your emotional roller coaster and come back to me and recharge your batteries. Get your stuff taken care of and meet me here. And some people have gotten the strength some people have had to use their anger at their twin as a platform to jump off from. It's okay to be angry at your twin. We are no longer at the vibrations where that anger is held, held inside, turns into a block, or turning into rage. And if it is, it's time to do some homework. So um, anger sometimes is an emotion that allows you to regain your composure, your dignity, your balance, and really bring the masculine and feminine energies back into balance. And it's about catching your balance, not being perfect all the time. So what else do we have going on? Well, um, yesterday we had Neptune. Neptune is actually, and you can see this on the National Geographic website or NASA, It'll appear in the sky as if it actually comes to a complete dead stop. 
Now, this is a personal planet for me, Neptune. That is the most recent planet that I ascended on. And so for me, this is a very important time. A lot of you were there also because many twins helped ascend that planet. If you look at it in a telescope, it's, it looks like it's a, a lifeless planet. We ascended it to another level. So you're not going to be able to see the life on it. You feel it. It's in your inner world. It's connected to you through your organs, through your chakras. So another thing has occurred here where your organs, everything has been connected. The cardinal cross is turning the moral compass into place so people know what is the right thing to do and letting their hearts steer them. They're getting pummeled and scraped out and dredged out and everything is occurring. So you can sit there and, and you clear the way and, and the universe keeps going, come on, come on, this way, this way. Keep walking this way. Keep walking this way because this is where the love is. Don't look at that distraction. Don't, you don't need to re-engage with that soulmate. You can say that all, all things are concluded with this organization or that organization or this person, place, thing, object, whatever it happens to be. But then you need to take the action. Same like um, uh, I once had a past life regression that showed me something. But it would have done me no good whatsoever if I did not gain from that uh, the actual detail of what I needed to conclude. And subsequently other things came up from other past lives that I was able to uh, take care of. And it's the same for you. And you can't ask for help. You ask your higher self for you to help you with this. It's time for you to step into your sovereignty. And you can do it. Because you're a source being, you are pulling all of your power of the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine from Source. Now, we have at the end of this week the full moon. This is actually to highlight the necessity for real change in movement. And I do know people that are moving. And an interesting other aspect of this is all of these subtleties. There's things coming up that have to be addressed on both sides. Aspects like cheating, aggressive behavior, mental disturbances, and money. What is it with money? Well, money is actually an aspect of Venus. It's the love. It's, it's a physical manifestation or expression of love. And yet that's become misused. People pay for things with love or money and sometimes with sex. And so as sacred sexual beings, all of the aspects of this, you know, who's using your sacred sexual energy? You know, who is draining the love of your union because it should no longer be allowed at this point? And what do you do about that? Well, it's important to really focus on the love and feel it in your heart. Hold your twin to you because you together are the power here. You're the love and the light. So when it comes to your sacred sexual energy, if one of the counterparts is using it elsewhere, hey, the buck stops here. It's time. It's time. It's time to step off and out of those old things. Get off the carnival ride. Let's go. And this is, this is energetically what you tell your twin. You may not want to have a physical confrontation, or for you it may be time to speak your truth. And I encourage you to please use the right words. Ask for the words to be given to you. Don't let it degrade into an argument or profanity. That's inappropriate for us. That actually lowers our vibration. We spent so much time and effort and hard work to raise up. So um, we are also having to deal with rationalizations, canceling and concluding old 3D contracts. This can be with a military, it can be a job contract, it can be a marital contract, it can be a contractual obligation that started at a spiritual level and is showing up in your physical life. We are dealing with 
false ego honor where someone's sense of honor and responsibility actually is not with their soul it's with that outer thing and that needs to shift to becoming what honors their soul if honoring the soul means that you cancel something even if it's at the last minute or there's an expectation of you and you're going to tick other people off you honor your soul that is absolutely the most impeccable thing that you can do because this is your immortal soul where are you going to put your investment are you going to put it into something that is not going to love you back or are you going to put it into your own soul so intellectualizing things and it is seeing the full truth is everything matching up because what I'm hearing and what I see and what spirit shows me at night is there's a lot of things that are not matching up we see this on the global scale we see this in families we see it in communities we see it in politics and we see it right in our own houses sometimes you know if you know someone uh, is capable of something and they're not living up to something what's really going on how do you tune into what are the fears what's holding them back now I have um, I have a story for you this goes back to my childhood when we uh, we lived in this neighborhood and a new family moved in and they had two kids and one was a little boy three years old he had an older sister the sister was um, brain damaged from she was deprived of oxygen we didn't know this at first so as kids we used to play with these kids and this little boy was the youngest one beautiful blonde haired I happen to know now he was one of the first crystal kids I ever met and I was a kid myself but interestingly his sister who we thought was retarded we would you know poke her she could play but she couldn't talk and she made sounds and you poked her and she'd go ah and while this is mean I'm getting to a point here and we didn't do anything more than that but this little boy three years old so calm every single time don't do that to Joanna don't do that to Joanna and do you know what happened eventually the kids started doing it to her not to see what she would do to see what he would do why because what was this little angel kid gonna do he was he was new to us he was new and what he would do is he would just take his sister's hand and take her home he had that much wisdom at the age of three now what is the point here my point is is that there will be people that poke you to see what you do and some of you are going to do nothing do not fall into the trap of being provoked know your own power know that your power originates from source and be the divine feminine be the divine masculine allow your twin the time and the space to do some things that they need because I'll tell you something I got another little thing here you know I like to uh, use visual aid this is this is a seed from a sugar maple tree and these, these fall off in little packets and when I was a kid that we called these helicopter seeds because when they go down they spin and they look like little helicopters the tree sends out 10,000 of these and I'm going to say this to you while you have everything seeded in you you're not a seed everything seeded in you you are a higher consciousness being you you have the strength of the entire universe in you you can make these choices and decisions and know that there's something inside you you're, it's your soul you are the creator of these seeds and this is the sweetness this is um, you you know this is new age fluffiness you are the reality of the creator you are the creation you are the light and the love here so uh, remember when it comes to some of the other stuff too, having to deal with other people money there's a lot of money issues coming up there's financial fears there's fears of the proper use of credit there's fears of banking there's fears of uh, the IRS or the taxing authorities there's all kinds of fears and it goes on both sides 
Many times if your twin has to break up with some, someone, guess what? It has to do with money and security. You have to help your twin get past this. And you might say, well, I don't have any money to give them. We are not handing over money to our twins. What we are doing is helping them remove these fears. You remove the fears. You unplug, you rewrite the past lives that put them in a fear of being financially unstable. And while this is American money, there's um, a lot that can be said about almost every currency because things are shifting around to the use of etheric money. Etheric money. Why? Because um, this has been misused too. It's been black markets and prostitution and gun running and all kinds of stuff. The liquid currencies are starting to shift into a more etheric use. And that's what belongs in the ethers, not your twin, not your energy. Your energies belong together. Your love belongs together. I just want to tell everyone, too, thank you so much for watching my videos. I have quite a bit of material put together to start up my webinars, and I will be announcing when that's available. It's a lot to cover, and it has to do with um, actual information about merging and I hope that you'll be interested in that um, as I said I'm putting it together but I will announce when it's available and it's there we're, we are still going places with this so for those of you who are discouraged please know that you did not come here to be dropped there is more movement and we are pulling it down into this level for you to be together. If the desire of your heart is to be with your one true love, it's coming to you because you wished it and you planned it. Thanks so much for watching. Please have a wonderful day and I will be around soon with what's new. Bye now.